All right, guys, welcome back to the shop here. It's been a very wet uh, winter here in Arizona. Uh, my next video, I don't really want to do because it's going to be hydraulics, and I don't like doing hydraulics, but I'm figuring neither does anybody else. Now I am still waiting for the customer to show up right now with their Rexall motorhome that had a slide out issue. And that issue was uh, they replaced the hydraulic lines to their slide out room. And after replacing the lines, their slide out stopped working. There is a lot more back history to it than that, but they brought it to me to see if I could actually get the slide out room going. Hi! Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Nice Vanessa? to finally meet you, yeah. yeah. John. John. Albert, Albert, nice to meet you guys. So, my understanding is a slide doesn't work. We're having issues with it coming out kind of diagonal. One arm forcing a little harder than the other one, and it keeps kind of coming out like this, even with them not moving it. But it did used to work, right? Used to. <laughs> now, the hydraulic slide out room on my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder only has one cylinder right here in the middle. But on HWH, a lot of times they have dual cylinders to drive the slide out room box in and out. But to keep the whole thing in sync, rather than using the cogs on the bottom of the arms, like a lot of manufacturers of hydraulic slide out rooms do, HWH uses a uh, third slide out cylinder called the sink cylinder. It's not hooked up to anything, but it helps balance out the uh, pressure to both of those cylinders that actually move the box in and out. And if you don't, uh, bleed the hydraulic system correctly uh, when you replace lines or cylinders or any component you can cause uh, the, the slide out room to come out crooked and so I was hoping that when they showed up I just had to bleed out their slide out room but uh, as you can see this is one of the slide out room cylinders right here when I was finally getting it going hydraulic fluid was just pouring out the end of the cap right there I removed it yesterday with their help and so we'll see if we can't uh, get this fixed because the manufacturer HWH doesn't have the cylinder in stock so now I did give them the option to just replace the cylinder and this one was at AP 15224 and of course if it's a, a replacement it'll be a RAP 15224 I think HWH's price on that was about $600 for a slide out room cylinder which they were willing to pay for, but it was gonna take a month for HWH to build it and then ship it out to us. And they are on a time crunch because I think they're heading up to Alaska tomorrow. And hopefully we can uh, get it rebuilt a lot faster and a lot cheaper than what they're gonna charge. And luckily about three years ago, I rebuilt the cylinder for HWH and I found a place locally that sells seals. And because I did that video, I was able to find that place again. So like a previous video, I did head down to Martin Fluid Seals here in Phoenix, and I found some replacement seals to rebuild the cylinder. Now, you can see the inside seal right there fell apart. That's how it was. Um, the remnants of this dust boot or uh, dust seal or wiper seal was the biggest issue because fluid was just popping, just pouring out right here as a uh, cylinder was ex extending. I can't show you what the remnants of it because it was all just powder. It all fell apart. There might be a little bit of it right here. Well, like I said, it seems too easy. All right, I just have to hook up the steel line back. All right, just tell me I didn't cross thread it. So it's a wonderfully gloomy, rainy day here. The uh, RV isn't here with the slide out, so how am I gonna test that? Well, with my crummy and leaking hydraulic pump test equipment. Think this will work? All right, the switch is down there. Battery simulator is hooked up. Ooh. So I can't show you the repair on this cylinder, but if you remember, there's two cylinders, and if the seals on that were falling apart, the seals on the other one are probably in bad shape too. So I still have to pull out the other cylinder, and then we'll put the two of them back in, and then we're gonna hope for the best. 
Now, I know a lot of people might be intimidated about rebuilding cylinders or hydraulic rams. And not all HWH cylinders are rebuildable. They weld them together. But luckily, this slide out room cylinder right here, that uh, cap, cylinder cap right here just unscrews off very easily. And about the most complicated tools I had to do this was a pick and a bone to put the seals in. It was pretty straightforward. And while we got this out, we might as well take a look at this. A lot of people may not be aware, HWH has a built-in brake on their cylinder so that uh, traveling, that can't extend or retract on its own. It takes hydraulic pressure to actually extend or retract the cylinder because it has like a, uh, I would call it more like a check valve, spring-loaded valve right here so it won't allow fluid to go through either side. So even if I had both those hoses off, you can't extend or retract it because uh, it's not allowing the other side, or it's not allowing air or hydraulic fluid to pass through to extend this. It just creates a vacuum. And so this little valve right there prevents that cylinder from moving, not by a, a, a physical brake on it, but by acting like a plug on one end of the, uh, the cylinder to keep the, uh, the rod from being able to move because it's pretty common in a lot of their HWH slide out rooms so you don't have to have a travel lock for them. I don't need that many seals whatsoever, but I just assume I'm going to damage some of them at least once or twice, and they're fairly inexpensive when you compare them to a price of a cylinder. So I got extras just in case, because it's a long trip out to Phoenix for me. When that Rexall Class A motorhome shows up, what we'll do is remove the uh, rear slide-out cylinder, rebuild it, put everything back in, and bleed the system out, and hopefully watch that slide-out room go in and out. It needs new slide-out seals on it, but I don't think we have time for that today. They're going to have to address that on their own. All right, so we have the cylinders disconnected, so we can push it out manually. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I just have my feet against there in the back wall. Are you guys ready? Yep. We just had some wood blocks wedged behind it on the inside to keep it from extending until we get the cylinders hooked up. The first thing I'll do is put this cylinder back in. Now, so I'll just get those disconnected and we'll slide this into a place in the motorhome. All right, get that set up there. It's gonna go right in the basement here with those nuts. And then I got a rag down in there to hopefully clean it out. It was full of fluid quite a bit, so it was just gushing out. I do need to take these jam nuts off. This is what's going to secure it to the side out arm. And this wind that looks a little bit serrated or scalloped, or I don't know how you want to call that, that stays in place. That's how you would adjust the slide out room in or out. I, mean, I would estimate this weighs about 30 pounds, thereabout. And then ideally you don't hit the end of the cylinder right back there and shoot uh, fluid all over yourself. Like this goes right in place right there. Put the three quarter inch nuts back on. HWH does like a standard and three quarter. It is also very important on these dual slide out cylinders um, to keep the uh, hoses the same length because HWH uses hydraulic theory when it comes to moving slide out rooms in and out and so the length of the hose can affect its operation too. If it's As long as the hoses are the same length you're fine but if you get too far off like a couple feet you're going to have problems. One. Two. And then when I took this off, I marked this one for the center. <clears throat> it's easier than tape because that just falls off in oil. All right, time to do the other one now. All right, so I'm just gonna loosen these up real fast. So you know, mark this middle one here. Disconnect the lines now. And I'm just using the lid of that uh, Tupperware container as my drip pan. Just holds 
on with that nut. Okay, well, we'll set this up over on the bench here and take a look at it. I would say it's safe to say it was falling apart too. Alright, so time will tell. Yeah, I think that's part of the seal right there, so it's a good thing we're doing this. Set so up here in the vise here. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it because I don't want to crimp uh, or deform the tube itself. I just want to keep it from moving around. That's it. And HWH coats everything with black paint that likes to flake off. So I'll soften it up hopefully. So that as I back this swivel nut, it doesn't cause too much jamming. And then they just have this high-tech uh, hose clamp. <laughs> keeping the, uh, the steel line from vibrating. Very, very simple, very simple system. And just pull that back out of the way. Try to break this right here. So my automotive F wrench, this thing comes in handy all the time. It's like a bench top vise in your hand. They're harder to find. I'm just going to use a big pipe wrench to uh, hold it. It wasn't too bad. There's just a O-ring that seals the cap that I'm unscrewing off right here. Pull that out a little bit. Slide that back. I do have to get this nut out of the way to go past here. You guys remember that it is an inch and one eighth from the end. All right, don't lose this. Got a brand new razor blade right here. I'm just gonna get. There's a that black paint that I was complaining about. We don't want that to damage the new seal. I'm just gonna carefully. Take it off. So now this cap should carefully slide off. And then the main seal is going to be down in here. I don't know if you guys can see that down inside there. We're going to pull the entire piston or cylinder out. It was full of oil. I got it this far. I might as well go ahead and replace this O-ring on the piston. This just has a sleeve that goes in and out as a mechanical stop, I think. Who knows? Maybe it's just structural. Maybe it's just for rigidity. Who's to say? All right, then for those of you that were wondering, this is a 2002 Rexall, I think Clipper, right? Yeah, Clipper. I like them because way back in 2002, this is kind of an entry level RV, but it has a gel coat fiberglass roof on it. Front and rear caps are gel coat fiberglass. A lot of value for the money, but apparently Rexall did not seal the windows very well on that one. And while Newmar likes to claim that they were the developer of the power slide-out room in an RV, Rexall came out right about the same time with slide-outs that were power. So I'm just going to use my hook, get that old seal off. Right there. I'm not going to be chasing out the uh, plastic or spacers right there. And they were able to match up the o-ring that I needed over at Martin Power or Martin Fluid here now I'll just pre-soak this a little bit so that it'll make it a little bit easier to 
slide on, but it shouldn't be that difficult. I'm sure a lot of people watching this just cringe because they're convinced that I damaged the seal, but there was no real resistance on that. So that was the easy one. You guys can see that a wiper seal has seen better days. So you have to get that out. This might take a while. I'll have to do this off camera. Oh, all right. So, yeah, this thing's just coming off in chunks. And there's the last big piece. Right there. And it just breaks. It's very brittle. I'm a little concerned about all these seals on all these HW8 slides now. Try to get you a little bit more light here so we can see what's going on down in here. There's a O ring. You can see them. Got underneath it right there. Do my best not to scar any of the metal inside here and making channels for fluid to get by. Okay, I did find that O-ring, and here's the seal. This one's a lot more intact than its other one, and this O-ring just went right inside right here. And the way I was picking at it was just like there, so the O-ring was facing back towards the piston end. I got the new seal right there that'll go on the same way. And then this is going to be the new wiper seal dust cap seal, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to go ahead and soak those in some fresh fluid there. Um, good old fashioned shop brake clean. Luckily I just went to the dentist and I got a brand new toothbrush. I should use my old toothbrush but that's at home. I tried to allude to what the purpose of this was before. There's almost like a manifold block here on top. You can kind of see right down there in here is the port where the fluid can go in and out. Uh, unless you have pressure, it won't open up the check valve that's right here, so it won't allow any fluid to flow through this port right there. And then the last seal is just going to be this O-ring on the outside, but I won't do that until last. There's no reason to worry about that one yet but that's what the last o-ring is for I think I got like five or six sets just because I assume I'm gonna damage something I probably won't but now they'll have extra too so the first one I'll do is gonna be the inside seal which is right here I can't put it in through this side because it's too narrow on that side so I have to feed it on this side now you could get a seal install kill kit or tool but I had pretty good luck just kind of pushing it in getting it into the ring down there or the groove that's down in there that's what I have the bone for that I can kind of work it around all right now I won't deny I had to set it up on the the block on the device right here so it's a little bit easier to do off camera but we got that lined up in there well And it's just going to be facing towards the uh, end of the cylinder or the threads as far as the profile goes. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a wiper seal. This one's a little bit more forgiving and easier to do. There we go. That's nice and in there. But from that maneuvering. Final wipe down on the cylinder rod. Inspecting it for any damages. Cleaning off any uh, debris I might have left on it. Lubricate that piston cap. 
Here. And just slide it back on and tighten it up. There wasn't a lot of uh, torque that was holding it down, so we don't have to go. But we also need to make sure that that bracket and the hose is on the top side and lined up with this block right here because it has to fit in that rectangular arm itself. If you guys remember, we were an inch and an eighth back on this, right? I just have to hook up this steel line and then we'll put it back inside the arm and start bleeding the system out. I won't need the pump for this one because I already have the one that's built into the motorhome right there. Before I started working on it. Okay, so both cylinders are hooked up now. Now I just have to uh, bleed the whole thing up. We don't want to hook up the ends of the cylinders to the slide-out room yet because we want them to be independent as they bleed out all the pressure. So if I look here underneath, there's a cylinder that's not hooked up to anything. I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, what the heck is going on here? But HWH, HWH uses that to balance out the pressure of difference between the uh, two cylinder rams. That's where it's going to hook up on the end with that nut that we adjusted. So we're going to run this through them in and out a few times without the uh, cylinders being hooked up. There's a lot of fluid last time so I'll go ahead and make sure this is topped off. Like I said this is just ATF fluid. All right I think we're going to go ahead and try this if you want to turn the key on. All right go ahead and extend. Go ahead and retract. Okay, go ahead and extend. All right, so I'm starting to move. Keep going. Go ahead and retract. All right, we'll just make sure that we're maybe a little bit of leak there. I just have to tighten that up a little bit. All right, so if you get that extended out on that side, you can see that thread is headed right here, so we do have to light it up, but we want to run it in and out a few more times. Go ahead and retract it. And so not having them hooked up to either arm allows the whole both cylinders to be independent from each other. And you don't get the room all stuck. So you see that cylinder extends when the other ones retract. Alright, that was good. Because if the room gets a little bit uh, twisted, you can cause some damage to the sidewall. Go ahead and extend. There it is. We're going to go ahead and extend it again, uh, I mean retract it, and then we'll extend it one more time and I have to line up each cylinder to go through the hole right there. Don't use your fingers for this because it's hydraulic pressure. Alright, extend slowly, go, oh stop, back off just a little bit. Alright, go ahead again, extend. So we put the star washer back on and we'll put the nut back on. I don't know why they didn't give us a little bit more room to work with right here. And it is 15 sixteenths. Alright, we'll 
we'll do the same thing on that arm over there. Okay, so that one's tight. Now we're gonna try to run the room in and out. I'm not sure how well it's gonna do with the sidewall there, but this does need new slide out seals too. But of course, one thing at a time. I am a little bit concerned about the slide being too tight. So I'm just gonna use some baby powder to lubricate it for now. But I don't wanna make a oily mess yet. We'll see if the talcum powder helps lubricate a little bit. We'll try uh, retracting. All that baby powder going off, it's pretty tight. Well, so far so good, right? Do we dare try it? Looks really good on the outside. We'll try extending it. This is a And then on HWH, just hold the switch down until it stops, basically. Because you can't run it through with the mechanical stops on it. There you go. Hey, we did it. All right, so we're not leaking there anymore. Looks like firewood will start a little bit better or burn better. Same thing over there, but if I go underneath to that same cylinder. Ugh. It is leaking a little bit at its out, but I don't think it has anything to do with the hoses, but I will tighten them up just in case. HWH used some uh, nylon small little HWH02 line that was eighth inch line that liked to fail and leak. So these are more steel braided lines. HWH doesn't want you to use them because they're afraid the braiding will fall off and get into the pump system. I don't think the owners of this had much of a choice at the time. And you can just see a little bit of a leak right there. And I don't believe these sink cylinders are easily as rebuildable. So if this problem persists over time, it might just be leaking a little bit. They might have to replace this, but we're a lot better than we were before. When I was running it before, fluid was just pouring out here like I was just pouring it out of a bottle. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if you ever do any uh, repair work on an HWH multi-cylinder slide out, it's important to know how to do, go through the proper uh, bleeding and purging on the lines. Otherwise, you can get a very catawampus slide out room. I was trying to bleed it just by cracking all the lines all the way around to kind of uh, give place for pressure to run and we did get it out but with that cylinder leaking as bad as it was we could never uh, balance the pressure between the cylinders so the whole room was coming in and out crooked so not much they could have done about it, it wasn't all it wasn't really the slides it was just the next weak point in the uh, the lake was the cylinder after the hoses but overall we just have to address some seals on the inside and the outside, but we're much further ahead than we were before. Very pleased with it. Okay, well, I think we're all topped off with hydraulic fluid now. All right, we'll go ahead and run this out again. Nice. All right, we'll go ahead and go back in with it one more time. Such a long slide out. We got both slide out cylinders rebuilt and they're not leaking anymore. I'll clean up my mess down here. No, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, I think you're all set. All right, and here are your old seals and some uh, backup seals for you. Oh, thank you so much. Just in case. Yeah. All right, well, we got both those cylinders rebuilt and installed. Slide out room is operating. They're gonna head down the road on another fun adventure. On the road again. Happy to be able to help as much as I could. We're gonna hope for the best that those cells worked out pretty well, but we did this about two years ago on the previous uh, HWH slide and it didn't have a problem. Or at least I haven't heard back from that owner. Very happy. Happily, I was able to repair those slide out cylinder rams using some seals from Martin Fluid Seals. Like I said, I think they're a nationwide company They're with a distributor just in the Phoenix area that I found. And that was like 40th Street and Broadway there in Phoenix. So for future me, that's where it's at. Martin Fluid Seals in Phoenix. Bye guys. All right, so that's pushed out a little bit now. Hey, dog. Oh, Miley. Oh, she's blind. <laughs> it's the one that's not going far. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Happily, I was able to rebuild those slide-out cylinders. Happily, I was able to rebuild those slide-out cylinders uh, 